crack on came about as a joke, really. Um, and uh, you know, we had the podcast has been going, the audience was building up, lots of people were loving it, and someone said we should have a, you should do a crack on meetup, and we went, no, don't be silly. And then in an unguarded moment, we all sat down and went, do you know what we could do it? And we just thought it'd be great just to get everybody together just to play games. So it's all about rolling the dice, having a laugh. And so we ran it last October, I think it was, uh, just after the lockdown. And um, it was tremendous fun. And then everyone said, so when are you doing the next one? So before we know it, we're in May, in, back in Derby, doing exactly the same thing. And it's got bigger this time. I think there's, last year we only had the ground floor. This year we've got the top floor as well. And I think there's 50 odd people. Um, and it's lots of games. And everyone's just been brilliant because they've all put so much effort into painting the figures, getting the game set up. And, you know, we, you know, Martin set up his tricky dicky game down below, but apart from that, nothing else has, uh, you know, everyone else has run it themselves. First time, I had marginal involvement in a couple of things, but not, not to this degree. And um, it was quite intimidating to start with, it really was. Mainly because you don't want to let anybody down, you want to have a good time, but also, and make sure everybody's having a good time. Um, but this time, second time was definitely easier. Is it, I mean, uh, Ian, who runs this place, Boards and Swords, has um, been tremendous. He's so helpful. Um, and so we got the venue. Once you got the venue and you got everyone coming to play the games, it's fairly, fairly straightforward so far. But uh, yeah, it's been good. But no, it's the first time I've ever done this. So Plastic Crack. Uh, <laughs> so this is, uh, this is the uh, evil child between me and Ken, basically. Uh, so we decided... Uh, so when we were both starting up our YouTube channels, um, Ken talked to me and said um, we should do it, we'd never really spoken to him and he, he, he rang me up and said we should do um, some kind of um, work together on something and I said well what the hell can we do that you know it's going to be it was during lockdown, first lockdown it started and he said oh we should do a stream and I said well why is anybody going to watch us talk of, you know what are we going to do but we started it and it literally was the two of us and then after a couple of weeks we said we can't do it just two of us it was two hours live on a Monday night and then we said right we'll get some guests on so we started to get a couple of guests on and then I'd seen videos that Martin Seventh Son was doing and also that Steve was doing and I said to Ken let's see if they want to join in um, initially thinking of maybe just as hosts uh, come with us for a couple of weeks and it, and it just gelled and the four of us just seemed even though we'd never met in person you know we did it all through the lockdowns we'd never met until crack on last year um, it just seemed to me we all had the right kind of interest, different interests, which builds up really nicely. And we became firm friends, and suddenly every Monday night we get hundreds of people watching the, <laughs> watching us talk dribble, which is hilarious. But we, we have, it's really everyone keeps saying you know you great things you do and what have you, and it's not really. It's the community. It's all the people that come together. You know we just enable it if you like, and uh, but it's like people like yourself, Alex. It's all the guys around here that just want to have a laugh just you know there's no animosity everyone's just playing with toy soldiers having a laugh and that's what it's all about so that's what it is So, so for this one, it's we're double, roughly about double what we had last time, yeah. um, which is really cool. It's it's great to get even more people because last time we were just testing the water to see if we we didn't think anyone was going to turn up. <laughs> so we were like thinking everyone's going to cancel last minute. Or we're not going to sell any tickets. So we thought we'd be conservative and just hire some tables. But this time we've got the whole venue, um, and yeah, it's really, 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 really. I still can't believe it now. To be fair. <laughs> The, this is the main thing for the Plastic Crap Podcast is our community. So the, the Facebook group, it, it's all about that. We love getting as many people as we can. We know people don't always use Facebook, so there's other ways to reach out to us, like Gmail. But 
we if you don't use Facebook fair enough but what I would say is consider signing up just to Facebook to just join our group um, come on our group because it's not like what you'd imagine everyone in the group it doesn't matter if you're a fo- we always take the mick out of it 40k players anything like that come on put your models up no one's get, no one's going to bash you on there because we, we all love it and it's all just for the fun of the hobby so I'm umpiring the War of the Roses game of mine try not to be biased <laughs> Not towards the Lancastrians at all, but no, I've been actually really good this game, no. Um, compared to the Napoleonic one last year when I may have been a little bit biased towards the French. And uh, everyone seems to be happy and smiley and everything like that. We're hoping to get this game wrapped up maybe in the next hour. So we, the whole plan is then people have got a couple of hours to play other games and try other things as well. So there will be a crack on free. It's uh, going to happen probably next year, 2023. I'm not sure dates yet we're going to try and work out and we're not sure where we're going to do it so maybe we might make it a bit bigger might try and keep it here we're not too sure but we're trying we just try and keep it central in the country because we've had people travel from everywhere we've got we've gone international we've got someone from france who's <laughs> turned up <laughs> so he's traveled far. so yeah no it's, uh, it's great CrackCon has started through uh, me and the other guys at the Plastic Crack Podcast. What started out as a bit of a joke about us sort of meeting up after COVID restrictions had ended to have a bit of a game day. Uh, slowly developed with people saying, um, can we come and join in? Uh, it'd be great. And then that developed into, well, why, why don't we hold a convention day? Someone maybe made a joke saying, what are you going to call it, CrackCon? Like, yes, definitely. Um, and we had our first one in October last year. And there was about... 30 of us and we've, it was such a great day and uh, it all went down so well we basically thought we'd hold another one seven months later and uh, we're done again only this time there's 50 of us we're back here at Boards and Swords in Derby and the idea is it's basically a day to come try new games historical games fantasy games any game so uh, we give the opportunity for anyone to come and host um, so myself I've been hosting a big Wars of the Roses reenactment of the Battle of Barnet um, but we've also got things from the Italian Wars World War Two. Uh, weird stuff from uh, things like Turn of It 28 and um, like some weird wa- uh, Wild West stuff um, and we've got games involving pirates and samurai, English Civil War and it's just a chance for everyone to come together who mainly communicate on the stream when we do it on a Monday, meet up, have a beer which we'll be doing afterwards and just have a great day gaming. And you're 7th uh, Sun channel? I am 7th Sun, yes. You won the uh, Little Wars Awards <laughs> I did, I did. There were many, many very good channels that were nominated. So yes, uh, no, I did. That was a uh, that was awesome and quite quite a surprise. Um, but it's it's just great to see historical gaming just getting a bit of a push. And if we can come to a shop like Boards and Swords, which by its very nature primarily deals with fantasy and sci-fi, and we can have a, a day of, of historical gaming and show people these awesome big battles. And but it's not all you know um, like a fuddy duddy kind of game and it can be fun and backwards and forwards I mean there's already people here who have joined the uh, the Facebook group and who've just stayed in obviously taken part in the raffle and they're already trying new games and things out so that's that's the idea and that's brilliant and then I think through the Little Wars Awards we saw that with how many people were getting involved and voting and things like that so it's just brilliant and it shows that our community is growing.
it came about through the podcast. We were, we did it every week, and then people were just, it started off as a bit of a joke. People saying, oh, we should all get together for a game. And then as more and more people started watching the podcast, it became a reality. And then last year, we, we, it started around about uh, August time. We thought, let's do it. So Martin contacted Ian at Boards and Swords. He was well up for it, you know, really wanted to know people here. And we'd never, we, we had never done anything like that at all. So it was a bit, a bit new to us all. And it went really well. I've never had, it's just such a great day of game, especially coming from what we've been through the past two years to having a day of gaming with complete strangers. You know, people you'd, you'd never met before, purely through YouTube or through Facebook. And we had a really, really good time. It was just a, a fantastic day. Um, and we were very, very eager to do it again. And what game have you been playing today? Uh, Turn up 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How has that gone down? That has uh, taken a bit of abuse, hasn't it? It's a, it has. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't tell you what Dom refers to it as because it's not repeatable. Um, I, it's gone down well today. I've run one demo game and it went really well. It's dead, it's really fast paced and it's got a good background and it's just it's fun to play. It's the main thing. It's fun. It's just a lot of fun to play. Um, so Sean from Metal Mercenaries was, was playing because uh, he asked me whether we could play or not and he he got a bit of a kick in, if I'm being completely honest. Um, which, it just goes, it's, that's, that's, the, that's the turn at 28 way. A good kicking in the mud. And what else have you been playing today as well? You've been involved in any other games? Blood and Plunder. Yeah, well, uh, that, was, that was really good. Yeah. That's definitely something that's been added to my list of um, possible projects for the rest of the year. It was just, I said to James, who was running it, the mechanics for the, the, the everything were just intuitive, really intuitive. I mean, after one turn, me and Mark, who was playing, just we knew what we were doing straight away. And I think that's that's indicative of a good game. It is, yeah, it's sure very fun. And yes. It works well as well. Absolutely. And what's, uh, what's the plan for tonight? Um, tonight, we're going out for a, a few coffees and to just have some serious sociological discussions. 